Hello class and welcome to Engineering 423 Electromagnetics. Uh, this is the first lecture in the series and it will be a course introduction. So we'll go over uh, just the, the basics of how the course will function or operate you know, as far as the grading and the schedule. Um, and then we'll also uh, look at some of the topics that we'll cover in this course. Of course, this, uh, this course will be delivered totally online, so we will be utilizing Canvas uh, that Olivet uses for all its courses, actually, but we'll be using it exclusively to deliver this course, so I did want to go over a few things uh, about that. Uh, first is the syllabus. It can be located uh, on Canvas, so you need to be sure you locate that and read through it, because it will have um, you know, everything that will govern this class and, and what you can expect in that. So, so be sure you find that and we'll hit a few, few uh, highlights of that as well as we move through this, move through this introduction. Uh, there will also be a course schedule that I'll put on Canvas. So be sure you find that and this will give uh, details as to uh, what lectures will be when and assignments and all that type of thing. We'll look at that later in this, uh, in this introduction as well. Uh, all of the lectures will be found on Canvas. So be sure and, and look for those. I'll be putting up uh, videos such as this one, which are, are uh, you know, just basically the slideshows that I'm narrating. But you'll also be able to find the PDFs of the slides on there as well. So hopefully that'll, that'll be everything you need for that. All homework will be administered through Canvas. So I felt like that was probably the best, uh, best thing to do for that. Uh, makes it easier for you guys to find it and understand what's expected, and then it makes it easier for me to grade. Uh, one note about that, though, please, please be sure to use the homework correctly. You know, I understand with, in this online uh, delivery that you know there's opportunities to look for outside sources and, and maybe not do your own work. Um, I would highly discourage that. Because number one, I don't think you're going to be able to evaluate how well you're getting the material, but more importantly, when test time uh, rolls around. Uh, I think uh, you're going to see that you wish you had done the homework uh, to help prepare you for those exams. Which brings us to the last uh, thing I wanted to address was the exams. Haven't worked out all the details exactly how that's going to be done. If we're going to do a proctored test uh, on Canvas or, or also try to administer this online, uh, I'll be bringing you more details about that as we as we figure things out. Again, this is uh, Engineering 423 Electromagnetics. Uh, hopefully you're in the right course. So this is uh, a course requirement for all electrical engineering and computer engineering majors. So uh, hopefully this is, this is what you're looking for. Uh, this is a, a three hour course. So that means there'll be three contact hours per week. There is no lab associated with this. Um, so just the lectures and the, the homework and exams. Again, my name is Shane Ritter. I've um, got my bachelor's and master's from Mississippi State University and my PhD in electrical engineering from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Uh, I'm a registered professional engineer in over 40 states and been working in the industry for a little over 30 years. Best way to try to reach me is uh, by, by email. This is my Olivet email address. So uh, feel, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or anything you need for the course. If it is an emergency, uh, you can try me on my cell phone, but uh, that's probably about a 50-50 chance of getting me on there, depending on what time of day it is. You can leave a message, but I always would follow it up with an email, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, in this course, there is no required textbook, per se, um, but I do have some recommendations here. Uh, if you're looking for one, uh, that closely follows the course is probably this last one, Fundamentals of Electrical Mag Electromagnetics for Electrical and Computer Engineering uh, by Rao. Uh, don't follow it exactly, but do follow it pretty close. Uh, these other three texts, I did draw some information from those, but the bulk of it came from the last one. So, you know, depending on how much help you think you might need or, or, or what you might need moving forward, I'll let you be the judge of that. But Theoretically, you could make it through this course without getting a textbook because I should have most everything in the slides and in the lectures. Just a quick word about uh, what the course is about. So in this course, 
uh, we'll be looking at the application of Maxwell's equations and a uh, demonstration of how these equations govern electrical engineering. So these are the fundamental equations for electrical engineers. Uh, even though you may have dealt with Ohm's law and power equation and all these others, uh, what we've learned is all of these can basically be derived from Maxwell's equations. So this is the getting down to the nuts and bolts and, and what's really going on uh, underneath everything. Throughout the study, we will look at static and time varying fields, both electric and magnetic fields. Uh, we'll look at electromagnetic waves. We'll see how that translates into transmission lines. We'll dabble a little in antennas and radiation, uh, just to yeah, hopefully give you a good introduction into electromagnetics. Uh, there are three prerequisites that I wanted to touch on just a little bit. Uh, one is uh, physics 2, calculus-based physics, and then there's calculus 2 and differential equations. I uh, want to stress and make sure that you have had these three and you, you felt pretty good about them because we will be drawing from the things you uh, covered in those classes in this class. Let's talk just a bit about grading. This is in the syllabus, but I wanted to highlight this. So the course is basically broken up into four sections. And each section will have its own homework set. So um, you know, each of the sets should be worth a total of 50 points. Also be four exams. There'll be 200 points each and a final exam, which is 200 points. That being said, though, you need to pay attention to these notes. So for note one, really and truly, there'll be a total of 60 points available each homework set. But I will allow you to drop one of those, the lowest. Uh, which will be equivalent to 10 points. So that being the case, each that's what makes each homework set equal to 50 points. So 4 times 50, that's a, that accounts for 200 of the total points in the course. And note 2, which is even more important, that uh, well, the, there are four exams and one final. So that's a total of five exams, where the final will be a comprehensive uh, exam. But here again, I will allow the lowest grade of these five, that includes the final, to be dropped. So this will result in four of these tests being kept at 200 points, which gets us to 800. So if you take the 200 homework and the 800 exam points, that gets you 1,000 total points for the course. So that being said, uh, that simplifies the grading. So I've just gone ahead and broken it down here so there won't be any confusion about rounding or extra points. I don't offer any extra credit. So you can see here, you know, wherever you fall in here is the grade you can expect to get. So if you make an 869, uh, you get 869 of the total points you can expect to be. If you get that one more point, 870, that's what will get you to the B plus. So uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I thought that simplified things and, and should get rid of any questions people might have about that. Quickly, I wanted to uh, just uh, go over the, the high points of the topics that we'll cover in this course to give you an idea of what to expect. So we'll start out with a couple of lectures or we'll do some review uh, looking at vectors and how we operate with vectors, coordinate systems, and then also we'll extend that into fields and how we analyze and work with fields. So that'll be lay the groundwork for us to move ahead to jump on into Maxwell's equations. Again, Maxwell's equations are the fundamental equations uh, of electrical engineering. Uh, there are two forms of those. There's the integral form, which we'll fully explore those. And then there's the differential form. So this is where your calculus and differential equations will come into play. Uh, you will be utilizing tools you learn there to, to deal with these equations. From there, we'll see how that translates into wave propagation um, of electromagnetic waves. And first, we'll look at how this happens in free space or in air, which is the you know, simplest and most common case. But then we'll also see how this might be affected in uh, material media. So when we try to propagate waves through other types of material other than air, you know, how does that work? This will naturally lead us into transmission lines. So when in transmission lines, you know, we'll look at statics, we'll look at quasi-statics, and we'll look at some line analysis, which is, can be useful uh, no matter which field of electrical engineering you go into. And then from there, we'll extend it again to waveguides. So when we're looking at waveguides, we'll try to uh, examine a little bit dispersion and group velocity, 
also start to look at reflection and refraction and how we utilize those when dealing with electromagnetic waves. And then finally, uh, we will dabble just a bit in antennas. Uh, we won't go too deep into this, just be an introduction. Uh, you can definitely take whole courses on antennas and antenna design. We'll just take a brief look at two of the more simple antenna types, and that's the Hertzian and then the half-wave dipole, which these should give you a good intro into how antennas work and how we, how we work with those. And then we'll look at if we you know, what happens if we use an array of antennas. So we'll use like three or four half-wave dipoles and use them together and how we can use that to affect uh, what happens with the electromagnetic waves and how we can each even do directional uh, transmission and stuff like that. And then finally, depending on the schedule and how things work out and how the classes go, uh, I hope to cover maybe some selective topics that... Uh, are related to electromagnetic waves such as optics and imaging, uh, maybe fiber optics, might go a little deeper into antennas, might look at metamaterials, which is a pretty hot topic right now. Uh, and then who knows, you know, depending on time, we'll just see how far we can get. So as I said, I do have a schedule, a pretty detailed schedule made up. I'll have a um, a little bit easier to read version of this on canvas but i did want to touch it base with it here and go over it with you so you can see you know which class period we're in you know what the date is how we're following the monday wednesday friday deliverable so i'll make these available you know on these days as we move forward uh, and like i said there'll be little mini lectures usually two per class and so i've kind of got that defined here and even uh, tell you a little bit what the lectures will be about which homeworks are related to which lectures, how many points they're worth, what days those will be available, and what days I expect those to be uh, returned or, or, or submitted to me. So you can see we should be done with the, the bulk or the meat of the course if everything goes as planned by the first or second week in November. And then depending on when finals are happen, which the school uh, has not really clarified that yet, uh, we should have two to four extra class periods left over that maybe I can cover some special topics. Like I said, we will be talking about electromagnetic waves here. So this is just, uh, just kind of a little primer here to give you a feel for, you know, wavelengths as we go to micro, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, you know, how big these wavelengths are. Uh, some are as big as football fields, some get down to pinheads, bacteria, you know, a virus, a molecule. Uh, you can see visible light falls right in this category here. Um, so it gives you some idea of, of the size of the waves we deal with. Also might uh, dabble a little bit on sources, you know, and, and how these are used. <clears throat> uh, here you can see what some sources of electromagnetic waves are. And this kind of does it in the sense of some, some is good and some is bad. Some can cause interference. Some can work for us. And so it's kind of interesting to think about all the ways that that. that this next slide kind of talks a little bit about, you know, things that we use these waves for. So, you know, we start with visible light, everything to the left. You know, we can have AC power, computer monitors, TV, cell phones, microwave transmission, everything to the right, uh, medical stuff like x-rays, and then radioactive sources. So this next one kind of explains why that is. because You can see, again, visible light here is kind of a bear. Uh, a demark point here. Everything to the left is non-ionizing. We can talk about that a little bit as we move into some of the coursework. Everything to the right is ionizing. So ionizing means it can cause DNA damage. And so that's why we have to be careful with x-rays and CAT scans and all those types of things that fall into that range. Uh, you may have be familiar with or have heard of some of the different frequency bands. So these are how these are licensed and administered so you know vhf uhf these are a lot of the tv channels from we did broadcast tv the am and fm radio uh, microwave ovens run about 2.4 gHz. then you get up into the military bands lsc x band military does a lot of work in x band and the k bands so uh, you know a lot of interesting things go on there And the final slide just kind of gives an idea of when we do transmit in free air, you know, which waves work better than others. So there's some frequencies that become uh, 
greatly attenuated when they travel through the air and the moisture in the air. So, you know, signals in this range aren't going to do as well as signals down in this range or maybe up in this range. And, and uh, it's kind of just a natural phenomenon that we've, that we've noticed and we've learned to deal with and design around. So hopefully this gives you a good introduction to the course. Um, I'll see you back here for the next lecture and we'll jump right in. Thanks.